for our presentation. And just before I start the video presentation, I want to show you a quick video of the actual experiments we're doing and how the visual combination is working with the brain machine. And eventually I'm going to walk through most of the details. Okay, so. Oh, no sound. Um, yeah, keep that loud. Your hand selects the music that will take you to your desired mental state. Motivator is similar to Pandora, the music genome project that captures the essence of music and applies it to a person's musical tastes. Motivator recognizes the music and automatically finds the music until the listener gets the desired mental state. Motivator is composed of three main components a mood based jukebox, a mood analyzer, and a music mood learner. To analyze the listener's current mood, we use an emotive epoch neuro headset. This is a revolutionary personal interface for human computer interaction. The emotive epoch is a high resolution neuro signal acquisition and processing wireless neuro headset. It uses a set of sensors to tune into electronic signals produced by the brain. It detects a person's thoughts, feelings, and expressions and connects wirelessly to most PCs. basically how can you learn from a brain machine data. I'm not exactly going to explain every kind of detail, but I'm going to explain what exactly we did with that. Then I'm going to talk about their enforcement learning, like in general, just to give some kind of background for people who are not exactly familiar with this. And eventually I'm going to talk about how you get taking all this brain machine data, kind of enforcement learning data, and actually combine it to a recommendation system specifically for music. And I'm going to show empirical results where we're actually trying to compare our algorithm to something which is quite common, Pandora, and show that users kind of like it. Okay. okay, so how do you actually measure brain signals? So we used uh, an emotive EEG helmet. This is something that you can buy like $500. This is a headset that you can 
that uh, usually people play, can play with these different kind of games. It actually senses some of your emotions. Okay? And let's say if you're angry, uh, energetic. And the idea is basically to give some kind of tools for game developers to develop better games. Okay? So let's say we're all, I'm playing a game, it's like I'm getting angry, he's going to get, I don't know, like more weapons or something. So, but the more advanced stuff from Palmets, which costs much more, like how does it look like this? And most of them are electrical activity. And you have to place it in different parts of the brain, and well, on the head, not on the brain, it actually senses some electrical pulses which comes from the core. Okay. At some point, most of those headsets come with actual toolkits which we train a lot of people. So for example, the headset we had was trained on about like 500 people. This is the statistic the company did. And what they actually do is, based on the 19 electrodes you have, it gives a signal. And based on those different signals, it creates features. Okay, so for example, the spectrum, how much time was the different windows, and everything. Using all these different features, they plug it in some kind of machine learning classifier, and they classify it to, let's say, what we had is four emotions. A meditative, reflective, energetic, and all that. But basically, what they did is take a lot of people, make them wear this helmet, get a lot of, um, let's say, raw data from the 19 electrodes, create different features from those, put into, and train the machine learning classifier of whatever they want. And so we use those classifiers that they actually provide us with the gaming headset. <coughs> and a quick word about reinforcement learning. So reinforcement learning is very like what says on the slide, is actually about learning how to behave successfully, to achieve a goal while interacting with an external environment. So think about a robot in a maze. And you tell him, okay, the goal is get the cheese. Okay, this is in the end. But he doesn't know what's going to happen in the middle of the maze. He can actually get some kind of rewards, okay, or negative rewards. Let's say he went into a wall. Okay, so this type of learning is actually how you learn, giving an initial state at the end of the maze, a goal state, some kind of actions you can perform, let's say going forward, backward, some kind of rewards you get. So what's interesting in this type of learning is. But basically, if you think about like how we listen to music, so I listen to music and I get immediate feedback, right? So the person becomes happy, the person becomes energetic, and doesn't like the song, okay? So think about like how you can actually use those type of signals, okay, let's say, from the signals you get from the brain. Like even his facial expression can hold a lot of promise for those stuff. Okay, so let's say he's doing this, okay, so he's really angry now. So you don't have to use headset for those stuff, and there's a lot of work of how to use like, different facial expressions, but those headsets are supposed to be much more precise in those stuff. <coughs> okay, so a little more about the reverse learning. So basically you have an agent, so let's say a robot in our case, this is the human listening to the music. And you have this environment. You can perform actions, robot going forward, backward. You can have states. So the different states is, let's say, the states in the maze. Okay, let's say you have, uh, you have this floor, you see there are different squares. Each square can be a state. And you have a reward. Okay, so for some squares you can get, like, let's say, a small prize. So you can collect small prizes in the way. And the last thing is, this is what you actually need to learn, is the policy. Okay, so some of them actually give you the goal state. Cheese, it's in this square. And you have to find the policy which gets you the most reward over time. And what we do is actually try to use this framework for a, so uh, some people get heavier much faster than others. I know some people get meditative much faster. So the thing is, if you can get this data with rewards in some other way without you know, using this BMI stuff, so that could be very useful as well. But asking a person every time, you know, explicitly, I do like it. That's a good one. All right, let's thank the speaker.